Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been constructing fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we're going to talk about what incubation and fry department is and how it can help the development of an existing fish farm. Very often the supporters of open water fish farming and farming fish in RAS argue among themselves which technology is better. Is it better to grow fish in RAS up to grow out fish? Or is it better to grow fish in cages up to grow at weight? In fact, in my opinion, but it proves the current situation. These two technologies are best to combine. If we know how to take the best of each technology, we get the maximum result. That's what the entrepreneur needs. So, I will tell you how to do it. Each of technologies, open water farming and growing fish in RAS, has its own advantages. For example, let's consider cages. We have a vast reservoir with clean water of good quality. We don't need to oxygenate it. We don't need to build something around it. That's the capital and operating costs of cages are much lower than building, for example, a RAS farm. But at the same time, a RAS farm works all year round, regardless of the season. And while it's either too hot or too cold in the cages, the fish in RAS grows perfectly, safely all year round. And surely you can also incubate eggs and grow fry in RAS. That means that incubation and fry department is or can be an efficient part of RAS. But at the same time, certainly RAS incurs higher costs, higher capital investment compared to open water farming technology. So, how can it be done the best way? Very simply, if we take these two technologies and combine them, we maximize the results for the business. How? It's much better to grow young, juvenile fish in RAS. If you have an open water farm or the possibility to build it, transfer the fry, young fish to cages to farm further to grow at weight, and in general this is what many people do. For example, trout farmers in the Republic of Karelia of Russia, who have always grown fish in cages, buy fry and grow it in the cages to grow at weight. How can we get the best out of these two technologies? Well, I reiterate that everything is quite simple. If you are engaged in incubation and ungrowing larvae and fry, fry is released to open water and growing there further to grow at weight, that is, the weight for the sale. Only then you generally take the best from each technology and get the maximum result for your business. For example, there is a large number of open water farms in Karelia and in general throughout my native country. And very often there is a problem with purchasing stocking material, purchasing fry. You can compare with the situation in your country and region. Firstly, you can't always buy fry at the moment you want and need to buy. Secondly, it's not always of the quality you want and need. That is, if you get a fry of poor quality, you don't just have a pay for a fry, but also get poor quality final product and lose much more money on this. Well, and thirdly, it's certainly the cost, as it's necessary to pay a fairly decent amount of money for a high-quality stocking material, which, by the way, is still not guaranteed to be high quality. So many pond farms owners are thinking about building their own incubation and fry departments, and other such farms actually have it already. Some have it on the basis of a flow-through system, that is, they grow fry once in the winter from incubated fertilized eggs, and in the spring the fry is transferred to open water bodies. Sure, it can be done this way, but today we will talk about incubation and fry department based on RAS technology, how it can help to improve business and economics, increase its reliability. So, what can incubation and fry department, based on RAS technology, provide for open water farming? Firstly, it's time-saving, as you can grow young fish at the time and season when the fish is not grown in the open water. And in spring, when the temperature in the water rises, you can release them into an open water body. For example, in cages, fish are grown during certain season or seasons at good and favorable temperature. This is the first thing you can get having your own incubation and fry department based on RAS technology. Secondly, with RAS technology, you can get several generations of fish per year. You can get new stocking material every month if you organize the cycles properly. Imagine, if you can release fish into open water every month, you can significantly increase the amount of stocking material this way. 
Also, if you have your own incubation and fry department, you can get additional profit from the sale of stock and material to other farms. What prevents you from growing a certain amount of fry for yourself and at the same time to grow the same amount to put down for sale? Nothing prevents you from that. In fact, doing this way, you can still earn extra money. For example, those months when you yourself don't need stock and material for production, you can grow fry for sale. The next advantage is getting conditionally cheaper fry. Of course, you need to invest to build an incubation and fry department. But once you have built it, you will get fry at much lower cost than you would have got from third-party suppliers. So you will have some savings on purchased fry every year. And the last but not the least, one of the most important advantages is to get the stock and material when you need it and of the quality that you need. Because if you buy fry of poor quality, you will generally get bad quality grow out fish with poor feed conversion, poor survival rate and so on, and poor growth parameters as well. So you can be 100% sure in advance that the fry that you grow on your own is you control its quality from the very beginning to the release into the cages, has such and such growth parameters, such and such feed conversion ratio. In general, you know its path from the very beginning to the very end. And buying fry from a third-party supplier, somehow it can be compared to a second-hand car. That is, when you take this car, you need to check it thoroughly and know that it's good and serviceable vehicle, because it may have something broken, some hidden fault. You will need to possibly invest money in its reparation. And it's absolutely the same thing about purchased fry. If you take fry of poor quality, then there will be a problem. You will then need to invest extra money as the fry will have a higher mortality rate, worse feed conversion ratio and so on. When you grow fry yourself, you clearly understand that it has a certain proper quality and you can be 99% sure that it will grow with a certain survival rate and certain amount of grout fish. Let's move on to what it takes to build your own hatchery. Let's take the farm that I'm visiting right now. And we'll just break it down a little bit. The first one is the building. What area of the building is needed? At this farm, the owner can get up to six generations of fish per year. So they can get up to one and a half million pieces of fry per year. That's the maximum number. This farm occupies an area of about 300 square meters. And on the area of 300 square meters, they get one and a half million pieces of fry per year. In my opinion, a good amount. If you also think so, press the like button. What equipment is required? I will brief you on what is actually installed at this farm. Firstly, this farm has its own water treatment system. Because the water is fed from a borehole, it needs to be heated, it needs to be degassed from excessive gases. Also, there are some storage tanks. Thus, at this farm, water is treated and prepared before feeding to the fish tanks. Incubators There are 10 incubators at this farm. Each of them contains 8 shelves. The maximum number of fertilized eggs is 800,000 pieces, which is in general with a large reserve, more than it's really needed. Because in order to reproduce 250,000 pieces of fry, generally 5 incubators are enough. But nevertheless, there are reserve incubators, just for the farm expansion or in case they want to grow fish of smaller weight and larger quantities. Larval trays. After the fertilized eggs are incubated, they need to transfer the larva for further ungrowing in the trays. Here, 16 trays are installed in two floors, each with the dimensions of 3 on 0.7 and 0.4 meter, that is 3 meters long, 70 centimeters wide and 40 centimeters deep. The operating volume of one tray is about 0.6 cubic meter, that is the total volume of trays is about 10 cubes. 13 trays of 4 cubic meters, they're 2 meters in diameter and 1.3 meters deep. They're behind me. The fry from 0.5 gram or 1 gram is transferred to this tank and here it's ungrown up to a final weight of 5 grams. While fry is ungrown in these tanks, a new generation of fish can already be incubated and larva is ungrown in larval trays. Of course, in order to grow the fish and keep in the tanks, we need a large amount of pure, oxygenated and perfectly treated water. And RAS equipment is responsible for that. This equipment consists of a drum microfilter, biofilter, 
At this special farm, there is no biofilter, because it's not completely rash, but a circulating system. If you are interested in watching a separate video about this farm, pumps, degasser, oxygenator, oxygen concentrator, that's all the equipment that is required to treat the water, write it in the comments and I'll shoot a separate video. By the way, this farm is designed in such a way that it can operate both with the use of flow-through technology and RAS technology. For example here, in these tanks, fry can be grown on a closed circuit. That is, wood is supplied after treatment in RAS filters, while the incubation and larval department can operate on direct flow. But for direct flow, a borehole with a certain debit is needed. All tanks and incubators are brought together into a single system – RAS system. So it can be one system, as at this particular farm, but it can be divided into two different systems as well, which is desirable. If you want to grow different generations in the system at the same time, then I would recommend a level block operating separately, the fry department operating on its own. Additionally, there are various auxiliary technical rooms, such as boiler room, operator's room, wardrobe, control room, feed storage. That's a basic combination of technical rooms which are needed for the whole farm to operate. Here, specifically, the height of the ceilings is about 3 meters, which is enough. This building is connected to electricity 380 volts, which is about 20 kilowatts. The real power consumption of RAS equipment is not more than 10 kilowatts. This building has its own autonomous heating, a pellet boiler. Water is supplied from the boreholes. There is a sewage system. Ventilation is installed. In general, everything that's required for a fish farm efficient operation. And if you don't have an existing building, of course, it can always be built. For this purpose, either a frameless insulated hanger or a sandwich panel hanger or a foam block hanger will be suitable. But in general, if you are interested in learning more about what types of buildings should be used for a locating RAS system, what the requirements to the building are, then watch my separate video where I talk about this issue in detail. Let's summarize. On the area of 300 square meters, you can grow up to 1.5 million pieces of fry per year and to do it continuously, and this is the main task of the RAS system. Also, while saving water as much as possible, you don't need any reservoir to take water from it and pump it. You just need to have a borehole. In fact, you can grow fry on any site, even not near open water bodies or in cages. If you have another site on some other territory, land, electricity, a borehole. You build a fry farm, grow fry, then load the fry into a car, transfer it, put the fry in cages. This gives you reliability, your own stocking material of high quality, economic improvement, independence from external suppliers. In general, these are important advantages of an open water fish farming. As a bonus, I have prepared a calculation and description of such a farm in more detail with all the figures. You can download it following the link in the description and see how it works, what equipment incubation and fry farm consist of, the farm where you can grow high-quality fry of trout, sturgeon, African catfish, whatever you want. So download it the link below. If this video was useful, press the like button, subscribe to my channel. It's Anson Pelcher and my channel on how to grow fish and make good money on it. Bye!